All right. Welcome. Let me get these last few things here set up. Um. Please use your airplane fuel oh, system okay. to set the desired fuel. Well, welcome, quantity. Mom. Today we're flying the VA flight from Oslo, Norway to Paris um let me get this thing loaded instantly so it can just leave me alone um yeah today's flight is about 762 nautical miles uh we're climbing to flight level 360 we have 157 passengers on board uh, and 5,181 pounds of cargo, which makes our payload about 32,813 pounds. Uh, for fuel today, we're taking 17.8, 17,804 pounds. Alright, so, I already partially started getting things together. Just partially, um, we had a tower, but my sim wanted be needy and need an update so I ran that and tower's gone but I think we still have approach and some other things going on uh, so let's first of all get our ATIS 127 150 so 127150 127150 Start up. Contact tower 118 decimal 3. Met report. Wind 120 degrees 8 knots variable between 080 and 180 degrees. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Clouds. View at tower cumulus detected 4,500 feet, scattered at 6,000 feet. Temperature 26, 2.10. QNH 1021. Nozick. Acknowledge information Juliet on first contact. Juliet. Oslo Garter Moon departure information Juliet. Time 1220 Zulu. Runways 19 left and 19 right in use. For clearance and start up, contact tower 118 decimal 3. Met report. Wind 120 degrees 8 knots variable between 080 and 180 degrees. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Clouds. Few at tower cumulus detected 4,500 feet, scattered at 6,000 feet. Temperature 26, 2.10. QNH 1021. Nozick. Acknowledge information, Juliet, on first contact. Alright, we got Juliet. Juliet! Alright, so let's get clearance. Really fast here. So 12450. 12450. Turn this off one digit. One twenty four fifty. Q and H one zero two one. Five thousand feet, can H one zero two one then three speeds can H four nine or Oslo Approach, Air France, 1175, requesting IFR to Paris with Juliet. Air France, 1175, Oslo Approach, cleared Charles de Gaulle, Big Bob on the Charlie departure, it only 19 and F, climb 7000 feet, squawk 5276. So clear to Charles de Gaulle via the VIPA 6 Charlie departure.
climb to 705276 on the transponder. Air France 1175. Air France 1175, just confirm the departure. Zipa 1 Charlie is on the ball 9 left. Vipper 1 Charlie on 1 9 left. Copy. Air France 1175, feedback correct. Alright. I thought I had caught that, but. Ryanair 737, wind bomb right, 330, 5 knots, runway bomb 9 left, cleared for takeoff. And we're taking off on the left side. Okay, not only one left so today. Vipper 1 Charlie. Okay, three, five, zero. Contact Pula right, is good. So we got that change in there. 5276. On the squawk. Five, two, seven, six. Auto. Alright, we got that set. And then he said we're climbing to 7000 initially. Cool. Colonia 1151, descent 5000 feet, QNH 10, descent 5000 feet, QNH 10021, Colonia 1151. Alright, that's accepted. Lima Charlie, uh, Alpha, request frequency change to Polaris. Lima Charlie Alpha, contact Polaris, good one, 127. Decimal two five zero. One two seven decimal two five zero. Well, it's supposed to be close to twelve forty five. Uh, twelve thirty nine. Yeah, right. Three two via diesel cleared so RMP echo. So left. we need one two nine nine twenty nine nine. One two nine point nine slash twenty nine point nine fuel is seventeen point seven. All right, we got that in there now. Jump over here. Let's sink nineteen left dry sink. Flaps two packs on. Calculate send the CDU down one. All right. What else am I forgetting to do? Okay, Charts. Five four kilo re radio contact with Oslo approach. Definitely need charts. All right. Let's so five four kilo approach readability five. Uh, Nordic five five four kilo. We are requesting an okay. IFR clearance from Oslo to Edinburgh. Nordic five four kilo cleared Edinburgh. Lap 7 Delta Papa. departure, Rende 1 minor right, Charlie. climb 7,000 <coughs> feet, squawk 2045. Ripper Rip 1 Charlie, is there? Uh, Nordic 54 Kilo, cleared on up lap 7 Delta departure, right, so, uh, squawk 9 Air France 1175 requesting and push back and start. Air France 1175 straight push and start approved. QH 1021. Straight push and start approved. Air France 1175. Minor 737 All identified. Right. Let's get this going. Let's start my A cars. All right. So, He's really choppy. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. 
Okay. Okay, then 151 stands uh, 20, request uh, push start and start. Then 151, push and start approved, QNH1021. Two people there. Push start approved, QNH1021, okay, then 151. Bypass pin inserted. Then if we send a main spell, we are directly to ILS from the bomb line to last. Locked. Alright, so we're ready to go. Once they hook up and push us back, we are good. Snow. Crazy looking weather along our route today. Um, just to give you an idea. Heck with that. Oh, no, <laughs> Oh, Hold on. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, see weather in Paris right now is 25013 knots. Uh, some clouds, but this is about it. Expect one on a left, uh, not descent to flight level 100 feet now. 9 kilo lima. He says straight back. Can I even 49 and pray to establish our Diego? Release parking brakes. Alright, brakes release. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at wheel. Alright. Alright, so engine mode select the ignition start, mass switch 2 is on. Let's get this party started. How far back? Appreciate the follow, Kokar. How you doing today? Alright, when I'm done, I'll add you. Appreciate the follow. But at the one two five, at one two seven, that you two five the zero right. Alright, we got a good start on two. Let's start number one. Please set parking brakes. All right. Brakes are set. I'm locking gear. Let's figure out. Bring charts back up. Uh, it should be fairly easy to taxi. Let's see. <coughs> Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. 5,000 feet. QNH 1 0 2 1. Left is clear. Right is clear. 3 feet descent out of 5,000 with QNH 1 0 2 1. Finner 9 kilo lima. Alright, so after start check, this parking brake is on. Engine mode selector to normal. APU bleed off. APU off. Auto brake max. Flight control. Couple of roads with an ignoring gear one minor two two stand six eight. Uh, we didn't make it to get to Neutral for right. Neutral for up. Sonic one minor two two down. Slow approach. Clear to do blow the neck. Hooks up to Charlie departure. And then the bomb minor left. It looks like this. Neutral for right rudder. 
neutral. Let's go left for it again. That's a lot better. Okay. Um, okay, flaps two on spoilers. Put the wind shears to auto. Four nine three two. Taxi Sierra and Juliet stand six five. Stand six five. Sierra and Juliet. Name four nine three two. All right. Hit taxi light. I think we are Columbia ready to one, go. Columbia one one five one. Wind upon two zero degrees eight knots. Runway one nine left. Clear to land. Clear to land. One way one nine left. Colonia one one five one. Air France 1175, ready for taxi. Air France 1175, taxi Romeo, Victor and Sierra to holding point runway 19 left. That was Romeo, Victor, Sierra to holding point 19 left, Air France 1175. Okay, so our so approach is going to turn load at 386, stand 6-4, information to Juliet, request clearance to Toronto. Romeo, Victor, okay. So let's start our turn. 386, Oslo approach, good uh, evening. Cleared to Tromsø, RIB 6, Delta departure. Runway 1, 9 or 9. Climb 7,000 feet, squawk 7, 1, 5, 6. Toronto River 6, Delta departure runway 198, climb 7000, squawk 7156, Nordic 386. Nordic 386, feedback correct. Okay, so we're on Romeo. Victor Sierra. Okay. Victor is straight ahead. Should be on this last Victor Sierra. Boom, like that. Well, I don't know. This thing is acting weird. Left rudder does seem alright. Let's try right rudder. Did just land. All right. Zero nine kilo lima via Titla clear dialess from the bomb line left. Via Titla clear dialess approach runway one nine left in air nine kilo lima. In air. Coming up on Sierra here. Right. Oh, yep, yeah, right here, I think. Right. Oh, no, wait. Maybe it's the next one. Maybe it's the next one. Did I make a bad turn? No, I didn't. Okay. I thought the runway extended out a little bit further. Okay, now we're on Sierra. That guy that landed. Back there. Flight attendants, no. Air France 1175, wind 160 degrees, 10 knots, runway 19 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 19 left, Air France 1175. Alright, so we're ready to go. Clear, taxi, I need to Sierra, this before takeoff, checklist really quick here. Taxi, 
Taxi, Sierra, Lights, T-Cast, Good to do when she was on, alright, yeah. Adam on approach, good evening, Skin, good afternoon, Skin, evening, 2-2, two, two, descending to flight 2, wave 2, for flight 1, 2, one, two zero inbound, Inca, Retam, 4, Mike, we have information, Echo. Yeah, Medivinate, 2-2, two, two, slow approach, expect INS, run the bottom line, no left. Expect one on the left, Skin, evening, 2-2. Two, two. Chair is in a bad position. We're still good, uh, yes, you're at 2 2 1. Start. Uh, uh, take uh, off uh, and uh, flex. SRS. Two, two, bomb. Okay. Two, approach. Good Other evening. Things. Clear to, to share the the bar from the Charlie departure. You don't be bomb, my dear. Climb 7,000 feet. To work to right. zero, zero bomb. Okay, I'm one five one ready uh, for taxi. Uh, ready for taxi runway one nine er left. Modify 4 Kilo, can we depart from runway 192 right? Yeah, Nordic 5 4 Kilo, you were cleared for minor right, off left 7 10 stop. Uh, Nordic 5 4 Kilo, Roger, and can we look at the clearance for startup and switch back? And thrust? Air France 1175, identified, climb flight level 210. And report your current altitude. Uh, 2500 for flight level 210 Air France 1175. KLM 15 run, uh, 151 uh, ready for taxi runway 19 right. KLM 151 set squawk 4114. Roger, KLM 154. Five, four, kilo. Okay, let's to retract these flaps a little bit back. and get this thing split up. Three, eight, six, stand six, four, request push to start. Nordic 3, 8, 6, push to start approved, QH1, 0, 2, 1. Push start approved, QH1, 0, 2, 1, Nordic 3, 8, 6. Kilo 9, Kilo Lima, fully established, 1, 9, 11. Colonia one one five one. Yeah, one five one. Uh, this call one one four one one four. Ready for taxi runway one nine right. Yeah, uh, two one 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 Alright, so we're up, up in a way, and see if I see myself in the way that I do. Cool beans. Taxi Golf, November, hold uh, runway, only point, run diner right, KLM 154. Air France 1175, contact Pula with control, 127.250. Air France 11. 75. Good evening, All right. one. Uh, Scandinavian 4 3 Charlie, Scan 6 1 with Juliet requesting I 4 2 Copenhagen. Scan 11 4 3 Charlie, you slow approach, steer to Copenhagen, hooks up to Charlie departure, hit a little on line to left, climb 7,000 feet, squawk 7 1 and 6 1. Clear to Copenhagen by the Oxford. To charge the departure from what? Alright, let's see. It says what? It says, you know, it's also ACC Polaris control. Alright, let's see.
Polaris Control Air France 1175 10,300 for flight level 210. Air France 1175 Polaris, climb flight level 360 direct Lima. Flight level 360 direct to VIPA, Air France 1175. Alright. So we're going straight to Good afternoon, Canadian 147 with you. Flight level 340. Canadian 147 with you. Flight level 340. Flight level 250. Cleared Lunar for my arrival. Got that going. Not much of a question. Canadian 1470. Uh, clear to descend flight level 250 right, so clear clouds. and uh, expect the lumen for my arrival. Passengers roam the cabin. So far so good. Check this out. Let's turn off exterior lights as well. So that should conclude our after takeoff checklist. Scanner Avian 1470, care direct DDOX. Scanner Avian 1470, take it. Scanner Avian 1470, direct DDOX, Delta India, Delta Alpha X-ray for uh, Lunar, for Mike. Finally, uh, refresh came through. Direct to DDOX, Scanner Avian 1470. There we go. Let's see what it says. Alright, yes, yeah, so the wind's 25013. A bunch of clouds. There's some cumulonimbus. Um, should get a little crazy though. Wind's going to get to 25015. Okay, Guessing 25. Approach. We're fraying. Okay, so. Pending on second last part. How far? You have another. Um, uh, how far? But uh, our time. Speedbird seven six zero contact approach one two zero. They small four five zero. Speedbird seven six zero contact approach one two zero. They small four five. Yeah, they on Charlie. He did make his Scanner Avian 1470, continue when ready, flight level 120. Continue to send, flight level uh, 120, send an even 1470. And yes, I'm just going to work with it, bro. Okay, so we are good to go. Uh, we should be down on the ground in about two hours or so. Get passed off a couple times here. Let's see, uh, Copenhagen. We'll probably make. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. That is a stretch. Let me put my watch on for the day. Good to go.
Airspace is quite quiet. Let's see something. Oh yeah. I mean there's only like four of us in it. <laughs> it's hilarious. And I'm the only one departing it from the south, but I can still tune um Coburn Haven. Control here one three six four eight five one three six four eight five Heavy button with the one I need one three six four eight five I have that ready in standby All right, we're just getting over Vipper now Contact approach, 120, Contact approach, 120, decimal 450, Scandinavian 140, have a good day. Osprey 722, contact Polaris, 126, decimal 450. Contact Polaris 126, decimal 450, Osprey 722. got passed off to. Oh, maybe it's this one here. It's all the same, ain't it? Yeah. Hmm. I have no clue. Two zero four five one. All right. Also approaches with that was. Long, slow climb. 
Control, this is KLM 151, pa uh, passing 10,000 feet, uh, climbing level 210, uh, river 6, Delta departure. KLM 151, Polar 8, climb to flight level 290. Climb flight level 290, KLM 151. And gave a lot of information there. Hmm. The Concord fly. A lot of them wonderful looking airplanes flying, a bunch of Concords at that. What is this? Uh, A340-300. Oh yeah, they did just release that A340. I think, wait a second, in France used to have the 300 or the 200. I don't even remember. It's probably, it probably was a 300. Ugh, I don't remember. It might have been a 200. But I feel like... A330 is a 200, so maybe that 340 was a 300. Let me see. I don't remember. Let's see. Uh, they had 340, 200. No, oh, they had 300s too. What the heck? Oh no, I'm tripping. They had 330-200s and 340. No, they did have 340-200s. I know. And they replaced them with the 300s. Okay. Air France 1175. Contact to Copenhagen. Over to Copenhagen 36.485. Air France 1175. Alright, there we go. Copenhagen is. Copenhagen Control, Air France 1175, flight level 325 for 360. Air France 1175, Copenhagen, hello, identified. Alright. That's all it takes. Welcome to Scandinavian 909 uh, in route Odin, Kalkalu 190. Okay. Alright, so we passed through Copenhagen Control, and after that, I don't think there's any more um, ATC. Thank you. Hopefully, I'm lucky like last time and. Paris miraculously this opens up but they have a event today at 5 o'clock UTC what time is it now it's 1 o'clock UTC so in about 2 hours it's going to be what 3 o'clock so yeah we won't make that at all but I probably could have timed that a little bit better I'm not going to lie Pantale 2 to switch to Unicom 1 2 2 Desmond bye bye All right, so while we continue this slow climb, let's take a look at the Paris and we're planning for the Mopi Niner Echo Mopil, right? Lufthansa Eight Lima Whiskey, Monitor Unicom One Two Two Eight, bye bye. Unicom One Two Two Desmond Eight, Lufthansa Eight Lima Whiskey, thank you, bye bye. Mopil. Niner Echo. Right here. Okay. So, 
And the Mopo Niner Echo. Relay 4 with the uniform contact approach 119 or 805. Sure we have everything here, so. So if I Mopo, Zaram, and Nori. Mopo, Zaram, and Nori. Devon, Nori. Devin Lorney, good deal. Alright, so then we need to look at the initial approach. Initial approach for 27 right. Lorney, oh, shoot. 27 right, let's figure that out really quick first. Seven left, two seven right, Lorney. So, the Lorney seven whiskey. Yep, off of Devon. Yep, 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 that's good. Let's come back in here, rival, the coach Viz, Lorney seven whiskey. That's that simple. So, we're playing for that. That one and then we see the ILS 27 right. Boom. And two. Just in case ATC does come, let me get the airport. If they come online and I'm gonna be lost if they start telling me specific places to turn. Alright, so we've reached our cruise altitude. And it's as peaceful as ever. Copenhagen EC77 Delta Bravo request and climb flight level 380. 7 Delta Bravo, uh, yeah, I just entered on your CBDC, have you received it? Uh, negative, but uh, it could be a, a couple of seconds delayed. Just received it now, actually, uh, EC77 Delta Bravo, thanks for that. Yeah, I forgot about you, sorry. No problem at all. Forgot about him. The center three, my guys, the climb level three two zero. The center three, my guys, the climb level three two zero. Find him. There he is. KLM 82 Whiskey Copenhagen, hello, identified, uh, direct elder. Somebody just spawned in front uh, of me. Direct golden uh, for a thousand feet KLM above KLM. me, but 20 miles away. 82 Whiskey negative, direct to elder. Echo Echo Lima. Oh, Echo Echo Lima for KLM 82. Scandinavian 909, climb 360. 360, Scandinavian 909. I 
I don't see them, but I have them on my TCAS, so they're coming up pretty close too. I mean, pretty fast. I bet they go in front of me right there. Let me look on the radar. Is there anybody in front of me on the radar? Oh, yeah, we're coming right at each other. But we're a thousand feet apart from each other. So, 738 coming from uh, Palma de Mallorca. Javon, what's up, bro? I appreciate two months in a row. Where you been hiding that, man? Bro got sick and fell off the radar. Working? Not at home? I feel you, I feel you. I'll tell you what, though. I've been uh, working mornings for these last few weeks. Uh, this week coming up after the holiday is when I start going to work at uh, 2 o'clock again. So I'll be open the morning flights again. The Scandinavian is bias. So hopefully you've re hopefully you've recovered fully from uh the plague. Bro was down bad. Yeah, summer summer months for sure, man. Eight thirty five? Okay, I mean that's more of a normal schedule. I, mean, I guess that's an extra hour in a nine to five, but if you include the lunch, yeah, it's more of a no a normal schedule. You rather work mornings or uh afternoons? <laughs> if life was only so easy. <laughs> Afternoons? Man, I'm a diehard morning person. I'll be up at like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Even today I was up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, this took like an hour for my sim to update. On top of whatever little chores I was trying to do. But um... Yeah, I, I don't know how, if I'm going to like this afternoon. So far, no problems. This took forever. Huh. Well, I mean, you got to go to bed early to offset it. So typically, if I gotta wake up at like five in the morning, I'll try to be in bed by at least eleven thirty, because I don't sleep for much. Bruh, <laughs> you said I'm not going to sleep. You're just gonna be tired in the day, though. Alarms can't wake you up. That's wild. And I'm wired like my body wakes me up at like 2, 3 o'clock on its own. And then I'll go back to sleep. And then my alarm will wake me up after. Since I was legit. <laughs> legit tails. But yeah, man. Seven AM ain't a bad time. I'm not gonna lie. Left hand side, three seven four. We sit down to Regma. Regma. Direct to Regma. Left hand side, three seven four. There was a left hand side. Evelyn seven three eight nine. Same for you. Direct to Regma. Three Mike Alpha. Direct Regma for Evelyn seven three eight nine. Thank you. 
Oh, he probably kicked him off the server because he was not responding. Transavia 544 Fox, open again, confirm the door. Uh, time being, fight level 190. I feel you. Uh, Fall to the 544 Fox, Copenhagen, hello, identified. Time level 280, direct Mikos. I'm gonna be in Copenhagen for a long time. Time being, fight level 280, direct Mikos, Transavia 544 Fox. Alright man, thanks for stopping in. Now contact suite. I'll definitely one one eight, be on four, later. Bye. Bye bye. I got probably three streams planned for today. So one one eight, eight four zero five plus times of three seven four. Thanks for the service. Bye bye. Really got a long way to go. I'm sitting here looking like. Alright guys, I'm gonna run and grab a snack real quick. I'll be back. It's gonna be like five minutes. If I can remember what button to press. Copenhagen controller though, Scandinavian 2648, flight level 190. Scandinavian 2648, Copenhagen hello. Uh, cleared Monarch 3 Alpha, runway 04 left, descend flight level 90. Cleared uh, Monarch 3 Alpha, runway 4 uh, left, and descending flight level 90, Scandinavian 2648. Scandinavian 2648, direct Nixo. Direct next up, uh, I mean, this is right. Aberdeen 7389, contact Sweden, 118405, bye-bye. Switching to Sweden on 118.405, thanks for service and have a nice afternoon. Aberdeen 7389, bye. You too.
Street 4658, Monitor Unicom 1228, bye bye. Unicom 122, doesn't let Street 4658, uh, have a nice day, bye bye. Enemy 909, climb level 380. 909, level Opening and control, good afternoon, Los Angeles 824, we do passing by level 25 today. Los Angeles 824, Copenhagen, the Noah identified, cleared Moon Oak 3 Alpha, on way 04 left, it's in flight level 130. Moon Oak 3 Alpha, the Alpha 4 left, it's in flight level 130, Los Angeles 824. Uh, Air China, did you call? All right, I'm back with a bowl cereal. Air yeah, China 938, Copenhagen, hello, squawk 4224. Squawk 4224, right, I'm going to Hmm. Lufthansa 824, direct to Nixo. Direct to Nixo, Lufthansa 824. Hello, control, speed left 482, passing 2000. Speed rate 422, Copenhagen, hello, identified, climb level 250. Climb flight level 250, speed rate 422. Air China 938 identified, thank you. TV 5, 4, Fox, Fox, time level 380. Correction 340. Claiming fix level 380. Right, we're about halfway to Copenhagen. Sun TV 5, 4, Fox, Fox, correction, climb level 340. Okay. Brussels Claiming control level open up. So we're gonna Thank cut through there. Uh, Is Amsterdam? Felix 59 Alpha, good making hello, expect ILS 09 and be lucky. If Amsterdam control would have opened up, that would have been crazy. We would have dang near had a whole, a whole flight, ATC straight through. Okay, yeah, the name in 2648, contact approach 119805, bye bye. 119 or that's some 805, and name in 2648, bye bye. Sun Savia 544, Foxtrot, monitor Unicom 122, decimal 8, bye bye. Unicom 
Unicom on 122 decimal 8, uh, Transavia flight for Fox. Thank you. The center 824, the center level 100. Flight level 100, the center 824. The center 824, contact approach 119805, bye bye. Approach 119805, center 824, thank you. Alright, so we have another plane in front of us here, 2,000 feet, he's just crossing our path, oh, it was two of them, yeah, it's a Scandinavian A350, it's heading to the east. Kevin again, control, uh, hello again, Nordic, uh, two seven gold, echo passing, uh, two seven zero. Nordic, two seven gold, echo, good morning, hello again, climb three seven zero. Climb three seven zero, Nordic, uh, two seven gold, echo. Bedex five nine alpha, when ready, ready, descend level one three zero. When ready, hello. KLM 82 Whiskey, 1 to 2 Unicorn, 1 to 2 8, bye-bye. 1 to 2 8 for Caravan, 8 to 8 for Caravan. What up, Corey? Thank you for stopping in. <laughs> Appreciate the lurk.
Papa Copenhagen, hello, climb level 240, identified. Almost out of Copenhagen. Not 7-8, sure, 1-2-2, right, there we go. 7-8 control, you're in contact call 3, uh, climbing through whatever, 1-2-0, one, 1-2-0, one, direct MIGOS. You're in range 9 2 4 3 keep an eye on the low, identify time 2-8-0, direct MIGOS. 2-8-0, direct MIGOS. Level 360, level 360, level 42. Hey, might as well get ready for it, man. You should be asked to go to Unicom really soon. I'm also shocked he hasn't asked us to go already. Now I'm looking at it. Hmm. Come on again, hello, Red Nose, please feed your fix with you passing flight level 90 for a flight level 19. I must not really be paying attention to them. Copenhagen, hello, identify. Time level 280, direct Mikos. Climb level 280, direct Mikos, general 3 feet. 59, Alpha, descend flight level 70. Oh, no. 
shocked he hasn't transferred me yet. Like at this point, I'm literally out of his airspace. Over to the wasteland. Have a good evening, Air France 775. All right, so there was that transfer, which was like five or ten minutes late. Over to the wasteland. Alright. So we're here. I can only imagine tons of flights are being done over on Unicom. But hopefully um, somebody does chime in. Oh wait. Down by Brussels there is a... Uh, Brussels control. So yeah, once we make it down there... We should have a fighting chance. So. Till then, fly in peace. I'm trying to see if I can open up.
in the what? What, bruv? You wanna have at it, bruv? You wanna have at it? Bing, bing, bing. I'm thirsty. We're gonna swap over and watch some interesting stuff here. And we restart the video first. But as it turns out, if you combine some minor deviations from procedures with rapidly changing pressure, well, then really bad things could happen. Stay tuned. The 11th of November 1995 was a grey and rainy day over northeastern United States. An intense low pressure was situated over Quebec in Canada and from its center extended an occluded front down over eastern New York State where it connected with another low pressure over New York City. This front brought with it moderate rain and strong gusty winds over New England, a typical November day in other words, but keep these low pressures in mind because they will play quite an important role in the story. At around 1600 in Denver, a flight crew from American Airlines were getting ready to leave the hotel in order to start their evening duty. 
The two pilots and their three cabin crew colleagues had started a three-day trip together on the day before, where they had landed quite late, around 03.10 in the morning, due to some unexpected delays. This meant that the rest had been reduced down to 13 hours and 35 minutes, but it was still well within the duty time limitations and the crew were feeling rested and ready to start their second day. The captain was 39 years old and had about 8,000 hours of total time. 5,000 of those had been flown on civilian airliners and 2,300 came from his time in the military. His colleague, the first officer, was 38 years old and had very similar experience. He had flown around 5,100 hours, 2,500 in the military and 2,600 on civilian aircraft and they both really enjoyed each other's company. When the crew arrived to the airport in Denver, they were advised that the inbound aircraft was going to be slightly late, so they sat down together and started looking through their flight plans and briefing material. They were scheduled to fly from Denver to Chicago O'Hare, and then from there onwards to Hartford Bradley International Airport north of New York. When they started looking at the weather, they quickly noticed that it wasn't going to be particularly pleasant on this day, especially around the Hartford area, but it wasn't going to be outside of the planning limits either. The forecast for Bradley Airport said that they could expect an overcast cloud layer at around 1500 feet, 3 miles of visibility in moderate rain and winds coming from 170 degrees at 25 knots, gusting up to 40 knots. On top of that, there were also some warnings about en route and low-level turbulence in the whole area, which is to be expected around this type of intense low pressures with winds this strong. Now, meteorology forms a big part of the theoretical pilot training, and I have always found it to be fascinating, since it's one of those things that really makes you understand the world around you better. One of the things that we learn is that the general wind will always flow towards a low pressure, trying to equal the pressure out, and in the northern hemisphere, because of the Earth rotation, this will cause the air to move counterclockwise around the low pressure and clockwise around the high pressure, which is why the winds were coming from the south in the Hartford area. Now, how quickly the air will move, meaning how strong the winds will be, is partly decided by how fast the pressure changes over a geographical area, where a faster change means higher winds. Basically, you can think of high pressures as mountains of air and low pressures as valleys, and if the mountain or valley side is very steep, well, then the wind will also move very fast. Now, how steep those pressure changes are is shown to us pilots by lines on a map representing areas connected by the same pressure. This is often shown in millibars, and when those lines are drawn very tight together, well, then we know that we are likely in for a bit of a ride. And that's exactly what the two pilots saw when they were now looking through their pre-flight weather material. The pressure was expected to change quickly over northern New York State during the evening, and that corresponded well with the forecasted strong winds at Bradley Airport. Once the pilots were happy with their pre-flight and they had briefed their cabin crew, they eventually got a message from the dispatch that the aircraft they were going to operate had now finally arrived. It was a nice-looking McDonnell Douglas MD-83 with its two Pratt & Whitney JT-8 Delta 219 turbofan engines mounted on the rear close to its T-tail empennage. The inbound crew, who had flown it into Denver, reported that it had been behaving well during their duty and that it was a fine aircraft. And this was also confirmed when the captain looked through the logbook, where there were no snags of any importance written up. Given the challenging weather they were expecting later on, the first officer was elected as pilot flying for the first leg. So he started setting up the aircraft according to the American Airlines procedures, which included a full test of the aircraft's weather radar systems, as well as a lot of other systems, and everything was working. When all briefings were completed, the pilots asked for a pushback and subsequently departed from Denver slightly late, time 18.09. The flight up towards Chicago went off without any problems, and they landed there at time 20.47, only 23 minutes behind schedule. But as the passengers were disembarking and the cabin crew started doing their security checks, the pilots were told that a big group of passengers for the outgoing trip had been delayed on inbound flights due to poor weather. This meant that flight 1572, which was originally scheduled to depart at 2125, was now going to be substantially delayed. Now, I'm quite sure that that caused some muttered bad words from the crew, since that meant that they were now once again going to have to work into the early morning, but this is unfortunately part of the job, especially when the weather is bad. 
As they were sitting in the cockpit waiting, they had time to once again check through the weather for the destination, which had not improved at all since they left Denver. The winds were, if anything, getting stronger with moderate rain, and during those kind of conditions, they would likely have to land on the 1-5, which was the only one where the crosswind would be within limits. The runway 15 was one of the only runways at Bradley Airport which lacked an ILS precision approach and instead used what's known as a non-precision VOR approach. I will explain a bit later what that meant operationally, but on a planning stage it meant that they needed a slightly higher cloud base and visibility in order to fulfill the planning requirements. You see, we pilots never depart unless the weather fulfills certain minimum criteria at both our planned destination and at alternate airport. These criteria are decided by the facilities at the airport, so with less precise nav aids, well, then the weather also needs to be a little bit better. Now, we can depart towards a destination where the weather is below minimum, but in that case, we need at least two alternates with good weather and also, of course, enough fuel to reach the furthest one of those. But in this case, the weather was challenging, but not below the limit, so the pilots were reasonably happy with it. They had also received detailed turbulence and icing information through an American Airlines-specific system known as SIGMEC. It indicated that they could expect occasional moderate turbulence below 8,000 feet together with low-level wind shear and that they could also encounter light to moderate icing in the area between 10 to 18,000 feet. Now, none of those things came as news for the crew, and even though it might sound a bit dramatic, these type of forecasts are not uncommon during the autumn, and it wouldn't deter the pilots. It's good to know, because it can help the cabin crew plan their service and keep the pilots watching the weather radar closely, but it wouldn't be a showstopper. But on this occasion, the weather would play an important role, and I will tell you all about why after this. Whenever you find yourself in a challenging situation, like the passengers of this flight definitely did, but which can also happen in everyday situations like economical issues or problems at work, it can cause anxiety and background stress to start building up. That's when you need a mental well-being, well, then you still better help. Now back to the story. Around 22.45, all of the connecting passengers had finally arrived, so the crew could finally start setting up and getting ready for departure. Given the challenging weather expected, the captain decided to be pilot flying on this leg, so the first officer took up the role of pilot monitoring. They finished up the last part of the cockpit preparation and then asked for push and start, so at time 23.05, American Airlines Flight 1572 departed Chicago and started tracking eastward toward Hartford and Bradley Airport. They were eventually cleared to their cruising altitude of flight level 330, which is about 33,000 feet. And during their climb, the American Airlines Dispatch Center sent an updated weather report to the crew via the Automatic Communication and Recording System, ACARS. This message provided a more up-to-date weather observation from the Bradley Airport, which was still as windy and rainy as ever. But it also included an additional remark saying, Yes, sir. This is short for pressure falling rapidly and is inserted to alert the crew to be extra vigilant when setting up their altimeters, as those settings might change very quickly. So here it's probably a good idea to talk a little bit about how aircraft measure their altitude, because it can be quite complicated. There are several redundant altimeters fitted in the cockpit of a modern airliner, and they all work in slightly different ways. In most cases, the outside static air pressure is measured by several different independent probes, and those values are then fed into a computer system, which reduces temperature error, among other things, and then translate those values into the correct altitude, which is then fed to the pilot's instruments. There are also radar altimeters, who works by bouncing radio signals against the ground below, but we will focus on the pressure altimeters here. Air pressure is used because it decreases as the altitude increases and is therefore quite suitable as a reference. The decrease is near linear for the first 5 kilometers above the ground and then becomes more exponential, but since it affects all aircraft in the same way, it can effectively be used. But, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the pressure on the ground is not constant everywhere. It changes over time and between places depending on how the atmosphere moves, and therefore, in order for an aircraft to show the correct altitude, the altimeter reference pressure has to be updated. Now, obviously, it would require a lot of work to be constantly updating that pressure all the time, so to avoid that, and 
to make sure that all commercial aircraft at higher altitudes are all using the same reference, something known as QNE, or standard pressure, has been introduced. This value is 29.92 inches of mercury used in the United States, or 1,013.25 hectopascals in Europe. And when an aircraft is cleared to climb above the transition altitude, which is 18,000 feet in the United States, but varies in Europe and the rest of the world, an aircraft will set this standard pressure and are thereafter flying on something like its flight levels. Now, as long as the aircraft is flying on that same pressure, if the pressure changes in the area they're flying over, this will mean that the true altitude of the aircraft will actually also change. If it's flying towards a high pressure, the true altitude will increase, and if it's flying towards a low pressure, the true altitude will decrease. But it's never really an issue at higher levels, since there are no obstacles there. But it is an issue at lower altitudes, and that's very important. To remember. Now, unfortunately, it gets even more complicated than that, because below the transition level, there are also two other settings that can be used, known as QNH and QFE. QNH is the pressure setting that, when used, will show the aircraft's altitude of the mean sea level, and it's used by a large majority of commercial aircraft today. The benefit of this is that it will give a clear reference to the heights of obstacles like mountains and masts, which are always given the height of the sea. But it also means that the aircraft altimeters will show different altitudes on every approach flown, since all airports will be situated at different altitudes. QFE, on the other hand, is a pressure setting that gives the aircraft height over a specific airport. And if that setting is used, the altimeters will always show zero after the aircraft is landing. Now, using QFE has the benefit of always showing how high the aircraft is of the airport it will actually land on, meaning that all instrument approaches will show very similar values during different phases of the approach, no matter which airport the pilot is flying into. Now, back in 1995, American Airlines standard operating procedures stipulated that the aircraft should be flown on standard QNE pressure above 18,000 feet, at least in the US. Below that, all three altimeters should be temporarily set to QNH, altitude over the sea, until the aircraft descended to 10,000 feet. Below that altitude, the two primary altimeters should be set to QFE, height of the airport, and the standby altimeter should remain on QNH for terrain separation. Now that sounds now, very are confusing. Was done, an altimeter setting check should also be performed, where the pilot should cross-check that the difference between the primary altimeters and the standby equaled the airport altitude, since that should be the difference between the two settings. That check served as a gross error check, which would highlight if they had misidentified the pressure settings received from air traffic control, and that's also worth remembering. Anyway, the pilots Very now confusing. looked through the new weather, which confirmed that they would likely have to fly that non-precision DOR approach into number 1.5. But apart from that, and the note about the rapidly dropping pressure, there was really nothing more noteworthy in this new report. So the aircraft continued on its eastward journey, and apart from having to request a climb to flight level 350 in order to avoid some turbulence, the flight was completely routine. About 300 nautical miles from their destination, the flight was cleared to proceed straight towards the Bradley VOR beacon. This shortened the flight a bit, so the pilots started looking through their charts to prepare for the instrument approach that they had ahead of them. Like I mentioned earlier, this would likely be a non-precision approach, and those are generally a bit trickier to fly than a standard precision ILS approach. The reason they're called non-precision approaches is, as the name suggests, that they have a lower precision than an ILS. But in the case of a VR approach, it also means that it completely lacks vertical guidance. This approach works by the aircraft aligning itself with an inbound radial towards the VOR beacon, and then, once established on that radial, the aircraft can start descending down towards certain predetermined heights or altitudes at defined distances from that beacon. These heights have been selected to keep the aircraft free of any terrain, and this type of procedure is known as a step-down procedure. Now, the very last height or altitude that the aircraft is allowed to descend to is known as the Minimum Descent Altitude, or MDA. And the aircraft is not allowed to descend below that until the pilots have the runway in sight. 
if the clouds of visibility would be so low that it doesn't allow the pilots to see the runway from the MBA, well, then the aircraft can continue flying at that altitude until they reach the missed approach point, which is normally defined as a distance from the VOR. When they reach that, they will then initiate the missed approach procedure, and that's the latest point they can do that. Now, as you can see, this type of procedure involves a lot more situational awareness for the pilots, and nowadays, these procedures are almost always flown as constant descent approaches meaning that they're flown exactly like a precision approach, observing the same stabilized criteria and continuous descent. But back in 1995, they could still be flown as a dive and drive style, meaning that the pilots could descend down to the MDA and then fly level there with full landing configuration until either the runway was seen or the missed approach point was reached. But already back then, something known as a visual descent point or VDP, had been started to be calculated. And this was a point where the aircraft should be visible to the runway in order to continue to fly a stabilized descent plot, basically enabling the constant angle approach that I've explained before. Flying the approach this way would also keep the aircraft slightly higher further out, and this will soon become important. Now, American Airlines had stipulated in their manuals that the calculation and usage of a visual descent point was the preferred way flying these approaches, but it wasn't always being followed. Huh. Anyway, Imagine after that. the two minutes past midnight, now on the 12th of November, the Air Route Traffic Control Center cleared the aircraft to start descending out of flight 190. The first officer read this back, and during the initial descent, the crew received two more ACARS messages with updated weather and information about their destination. The first message included a new QFE setting of 29.23 inches of mercury and a QNH setting of 29.42. The second message informed the pilots that aircraft had been landing at Bradley during the preceding hour, but that they had experienced turbulence and wind shears on final. Now, those of you who are loyal followers of this channel, you know what a wind shear is, but if you are new here, well then take this chance to subscribe below. A wind shear means that the wind can suddenly change abruptly, both in intensity and direction, and this can cause issues with the controllability of the aircraft. In extreme cases, when those changes exceed certain limit values, the pilots would have to execute a wind shear escape maneuver, and that's normally also accompanied by a wind shear warning from the weather radar or ground proximity warning system. Now, these maneuvers are a bit tricky to fly, and it's therefore great to get these type of early warnings of the existence of these conditions so the pilots can breathe and prepare properly. In this case, though, the pilots were well aware of the issues and the kind of turbulence that they would likely encounter. The captain called up the cabin crew early on in the descent and told them about the turbulence, and to finish the service and start securing the cabin early. He also made a PA to the passengers, letting them know about the poor weather ahead, and all of this indicated that the crew was just well aware and prepared for what was about to come. This was all done perfectly according to standard operating procedures and good airmanship. And up until this point, these two pilots were acting exactly as you would expect from a pair of proper professionals. As the descent continued, the first officer also keyed in the frequency for the Automatic Terminal Information Service, ATIS, and started copying information for Victor. But he quickly realized that this information was more than one hour old, and therefore gave a QNH value of 2950, much higher than it now was. So why was the ATIS information so old then? Well, it turns out that this was because down on the ground, the weather was now really making itself known. And in the control tower, the wind was hmm. howling so loud that it was hard thing to, to we'll hear anything happening outside of their headsets. A shift change had now happened, and since the outgoing controller had not yet updated the oh, ATIS, man. he left, and the incoming controller didn't see or hear that a new message had been received from the meteorology office, he simply just forgot to update the ATIS. At time 33 minutes past midnight, the controller cleared flight 1572 to continue their descent to maintain 11,000 feet, and he also read out the Bradley altimeter setting of QNH 29.40, which the first officer read back. As the descent continued, the crew now started working through their before landing checklist, and as part of that, the first officer prompted altimeters, to which the captain responded 29.50 referring to that old QNH from the 80s. The first officer responded, uh, they called 2947 on the way down, which was a bit closer to the true value, but none of these figures were actually correct. 
In fact, they had received an even lower set. Remember, 2940 from the controller, and it's not clear where the first officer's figure of 2947 actually came from. In any case, the captain now also started briefing the VOR approach, and as part of that briefing, he stated um, 174 is the elevation, so 29, 23, set and cross check. This meant that the correct QFE setting had now at least been entered on both their primary altimeters, and that's of course the setting that would give them the height of the runway. The first officer responded in a quite low voice that this gave them a 70 foot difference. Unclear here if he was referring to the difference between the two primary altimeters or between them and the standby, which should have been showing a difference of 170 feet, which was the field elevation. And the cross check at 10,000 feet to confirm these values could never be picked up on the cockpit voice recorder, so it probably wasn't done. At time 43 minutes and right. 31 seconds past midnight, the crew were handed over to the Bradley approach controller and advised that they could indeed expect the VOR approach. One, three, one, one, they were then told to descend 4,000 feet, but without one, three, getting an updated QNH and QFE value. Instead, the approach controller told the pilots that the wind was 170 degrees, 29 knots, gusting 39, which is quite a lot of wind, over 70 kilometers per hour in the gust, and it is possible that the pressure update was omitted just because the wind information was so extreme and that the controller wanted to get to that part. We don't really know. But since the pressure was now falling rapidly and their last updated pressure was over 30 minutes old, this meant that the crew would now be flying with a setting that would show them being about All 76 right. feet. Let's go ahead and swap back over to our... Uh... Transitions are not working. Interesting. Alright. Let's see. One, three, one, one hundred. Okay, that is perfect. During oh. 7 Hotel Mike, contact arrival, one one eight small two five five. Good luck. Aggressive control, Air France 1175, flight level 360. Air France 1175, Brussels, radar contact, maintain flight level 360, direct mobile. Maintain 360, direct mobile, Air France 1175. Delta Lay 54, Fox Delta 75, 360. Mobile. Slight deviation to make that work. Mm. He said now. Doing seven six four two, leave my airspace. Radar service terminate. Want to unicom one two two. That's my bye bye. Unicom, thank you for the joining. Six four two bye. Select the red one seven one red for taxi. Stand by, please. Uh, the south lay five four fox trot. Did you copy? Descend now. Flightable three six zero. Sending flight level 360 to the left side, 4 Brussels control, speed Brussels, down. Squawk 1000. FedEx 251, turn left, direct to Denos, and descend flight level 180, level Denos. Yeah, you gotta repeat that. FedEx 251, left to Denos, and descend flight level 180, level Denos. Left to Denos, and descend flight level 180, level Denos. The EV68 Papa Kilo, Unicom, 122, that's my bye bye. Afternoon, this is Ryanair 2352, level 310. Ryanair 2352, Brussels, radar contact, maintain level 310. Maintaining 310, Ryanair 2352. Delta 54, Foxtrot, descent flight level 260, level by Tolgo. Descend 
sending flight level 360 to Zavia, flight from Fox to Toulouse. The Swiss 2 Bravo, sorry for delay, descent flight level 200 with good rate. Descending flight level 200, uh, Swiss 2 Hotel Bravo. Yeah, so the traffic just does not reply, I'm very sorry. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> that's some things. Air France, 1175, descent flight level 260. Descend 260, Air France 1175. 260. Alright, so we got an early descent. Delta 5 for Fox will descend now, flight level 260, now, level by toll rule. Sending flight level 260, Delta Let's see. What we're looking like in terms of. Well, the standard 2 November X ray descent flight level 290. 290, sorry, that makes sense. The standard 2 November X ray descent flight level 290. Mark number. Uh, Mark decimal 7. Yep, there's the airport right there. The standard 2 November X ray, that's more 75 or less, please. 75 for that, Rainer 1732, Marcus 176 or greater. Mark 176 or greater, Rainer 172. Swiss 2 Bravo, Link, Mayor Space, Air Thanks for service. Bye bye. Control, good day, Rainer. Force 6000 November with you. Right now, 4 6 of November, Brussels radar contact. Let's Expect try this. Four, proceed to the Body 5 Bravo for the present. Direct uh, Logi, then Gosley. Descent flight level 250. Descent flight level 250. Expect the runway out of 24 uh, to Body 5 Bravo departure. And, uh, that didn't work either. Proceed direct uh, Logi and uh, Gosley. Uh, Gosley, yeah. right now. Uh, Sorry, 40 seconds. Yeah, Logi Gosley is declared. Copy. Alright, now 40 seconds. 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 Alright, now I think I see what the problem is. So do you want to three fly level three four zero? Uh, so do you want to three heavy Brussels radar contact? Uh we take level three Let's four Let's try this again. Made in three four zero, so do you want to three? Right now four six thousand number Brussels. Right now four six thousand number guy. Yeah, you're clear that we'll find level 253 and find level 234 in the sending distance of uh, level bus. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sorry about that. Uh, as we uh, report to you, uh, it was too fast, uh, the rate of descent. Uh, yeah, now we are at uh, 230. Uh, right now, 47. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop the sending distance and accept the rate of descent of the okay? Okay, okay, okay. Second, please, we are blocked. 230 is clear, level man. Now 230, Ryanair 46 Just for future reference, access operator descent does not justify no compliance with defense clearance, okay? Copy the 46 Alpha Alpha. Mm -hmm. Alex 251 Heavy Leaf Mass Space Radio Sensor Terminator 1 Kilo Commandant 2, that's light away. Yep, 122, it's uh, 295. Two flight level, three four zero. Okay, got lots of stations. Uh, got the beeline. Two Different kilo. Code. Oh my Papa, gosh. Nothing want to work today. Coconut uh, level ten beeline. Coconut 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 level ten 
Kilo Echo Golf India Tango. Kegit. Kilo Echo Golf India Tango. Kegit. Kilo Echo Golf India Tango. Kegit. Long pause. Direct Kegit. Answer 910. Lexia 8171 ready for taxi. Lexia 8171 by the way, taxi on point Alpha runway 24 QNH 116. Uh, taxi on the point Alpha runway 24 Lexia 8171. Line to the local power to the Luxor 871, QNH 1016. QNH 1016, Luxor 871. Rider 1st class November, descent flight level 100. Sending flight level 100, right, airport is Alpha November. Line 4, Kilo, Traction Line 2, Kilo Papa, Brussels, Radar Contact, Party 6, Alpha, standard arrival, ILS 5, right. Alright, had to delete those codes. Since... I couldn't get them to work. Easy one zero seven nine. Yeah, it's right there. Easy one zero seven nine. Brussels. Radar contact. Uh, right heading two seven zero. And descent flight level six zero. Correction, descent level one hundred. Descent flight level one hundred and two eight zero. Heading two seven zero. Two seven zero. Line 2 Kilo Papa, descent level 250. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the line 2 Kilo Papa, Line 2 Kilo Papa, descent level 250. 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 Line 2 Kilo Papa, I can do. See that the sky. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye Twenty one degrees ten fifteen. All right, for a normal liar, let's approach should be two hundred. Right, of course, it's all November descent flight level six zero. Descending flight level six zero, right now, forty five hundred. And then 2 Kilo Papa, expect ILS 25 right. FL 1175, leaving my space, and that's a terminator, one to the unicorn, one to the that's all eight, bye bye. 2 2 decimal 8, have a good day, Air France 1175. Alright, back up to the wasteland we go. That was short lived. Very, very, very short lived, but we are on par now to set up for our approach into Paris, Charles de Gaulle. Alright, so for more pilgrim on his arrow. Let's look at these constraints. Devon should be negative 1600, or 16,000, sorry. Okay, that's cool. At Lorney, between 15 and 11. So, 9 is fine.
I guess we should start descending, huh? Let's go down to 5,000. Let's take a look at what we need to intercept the glide slope at 5,000. How did I know? Set to descend. We're not talking to anybody until we get in the vicinity of the airport. Although, I don't let me see how many people are actually going there right now. Uh, there's quite a few on the docket for um, repair. Sorry. Okay. So there should be some expectation of traffic. There's actually a Concord. It's leaving out to take off. Damn. Missed him. Alright. I'll be right back. I think I have, uh, I have some decent time in. How long do we have to? We got to park 36 minutes? Feels like I'm going to be crunching time while we are like, 85 miles out, but right, I'll be right back.
All right. We're setting up and we're descending into 13,000 for 5,000. There is no ATC at Paris. Where are we at in relation? There we go. Okay. Concord. Dang, it's through 16,000 already? Okay. Alright. Also, let's brief this approach. Right now, we are on the initial approach, right? Yep. Alright. So we have the ILS 27 right for Charles de Gaulle. Frequencies 110.35, courses 264, 1035, 263. I wonder if it'll let me change that. F264. F two six three. All right, um, inset the glide slope at five thousand, which is fourteen point five DME from P and W. DA is 200, DH sorry is 200, DA is 592, it's a 3 degree scent angle, uh, we have high intensity lights too, and rails and pappies, it's pretty simple from the looks of it, uh, Mr. Pro climbs straight ahead to 5000, then to Papa Golf 651, continue on 281 degrees to Papa Golf 652, then to PO win at max 5000 and as directed. Alright, looks like somebody is on approach here to one of the runaways ahead of me. Make sure. Actually, no, he's not. He's on his way to uh, Orly. Passing through, okay. So he's a non factor. He's 10 miles ahead. Is that only 10 miles ahead of us? Yeah, I guess I am kind of zoomed in pretty close on this map. Just about that time. How much time do we have to park? Mm, 24 minutes. All right. It actually panned out to be pretty decent. I'm going to go direct to the IG. 27 right. Effectively, we're about 25 miles out. Trying to see if I see a airplane, but I don't. He's more over the 
at our uh, 10, 11 o'clock. 10, 10, 11 o'clock here. Yeah, um, Sector, but I really don't see him at all, so. He's only 400 feet below me. But over there in that corner. Nine miles out, maybe even eight. Shoot, maybe even seven. More and more I look at it. That's wild. nine knots about to intercept the active localizer Oh, chop, chop. And there's those clouds the Mitar was telling us about. About 15 miles out now. Why it keeps. Oh, because we are on Vatsin. Alright, we can officially intercept. The glide slope. Approach mode. There's transition altitude. Flaps one. Runway in sight. Here down. Flaps two. Three flaps four. 
on spoilers. Four landing checklist, cabin crew. Advise landing gates down, flaps set to landing. Spoilers are on, auto brakes not required. Engine mode selector is normal. Exterior yeah. lights are checked. Go around altitude is set. ECAM memo landing no blue. Mm -hmm. Probably make a radio call, right? Um, the go all traffic air friends 1175, three mile final, runway 27 right, the go all traffic. 1000. Just thought about that, but I don't think nobody else is um, even a factor, so we're good. Got landing inhibit. Reminded how bad handling in the ground can be sometimes. All right. I uh, appreciate it, man. Thanks for stopping in. How are you today? The Gaul traffic, Air France 1175, clear of 27 right on Zulu 3, the Gaul traffic. We want to go to the left, not the right, actually. Okay, where'd you fly to? The Gaul traffic, Air France 1175, crossing 27 left, the Gaul traffic. Alright, so we're clear on the left, clear on the right. Are we really clear on the left there? Somebody's not on the, the tower on Unicom or whatever it may be. Uh, well. Alright, let's 
turn off these lights. Start the APU. What is up with the steering today? It is like, you know what? That's what it is. No, steering to the left seemed very sensitive compared to steering to the right. Is that an easy jet? Yeah, he definitely was not uh, communicating. Alright, we'll just take this all the way down to the turns in the Quebec, I believe it is, and then, uh, yeah, it did look a little exaggerated, didn't it? Might have pulled back a little bit too much. Um, yeah, shoot, I was supposed to stream a little bit earlier, but... I didn't know the update was out, so as soon as I turned it on today, it was like, update, and I'm like, oh man, that took a long time. Now my steering is all sensitive. I know, so far, I noticed a couple things that they fixed. Which I'm happy about, like the uh, windows constantly changing from window to frame, or frame to window, whatever it was. Um, that was one big notable thing I noticed. Fast. Is that another easy jet? Looks like it is. I am. So, where do you plan to head to? I guess that's the next question. Sky's your limit now. Sim is updated. Can't nobody tell you nothing. I might turn here for the Foxtrot. It is Foxtrot, ain't it? Yeah, it is Foxtrot. Turn on Foxtrot. Take Foxtrot to Echo, I think it is. This thing is super sensitive. All right, cool, cool, cool. Now, I was just asking, now, uh, where do you? think you want to go to now that the sim is updated. How much time do I have to park? Eight minutes? Oh, we're early. <laughs> What's up, Reaper man? How you doing? I almost was wondering if he was going to get on today or not. My man is on big vacation. I wish I was you. J 
just all right. It's Sunday, but and we still got an extra day off. You got a bunch, but it's still a bunch. It's an extra day off, man. So excited. I'll tell you what, you need to try Fortnite. <laughs> it is an entire cluster fuck. Middays and late nights. Sounds like the life of an eligible bachelor, man. Alright, what is this? Ah, oh, no, this is Fox November 2, okay. Graduation, when, 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 most, when does a graduation ever go bad? I would like to hear this. Right, that's clear, so we're going to take it. I have these questions. When does a graduation ever go bad? Oh, that car was floating. Oh, you want to play? <laughs> you're going to have fun. Oh, man, you're going to have fun. It's not even the same no more, man. I don't want to give you too much. But it's definitely not the same anymore. He said they'll find a way. Oh, so somebody did start up. Oh, man, that sucks. But at least it went well for the most part. I don't think nobody graduated this year. 9 9 went to 7. It's going to seven from sorry and so she's well I feel like she should have been in middle school already but the way her school is set up now she's going to the middle school but and Sarai is going to second grade I never know why this thing is pulling to the left When we stop, I'm going to do a, uh, a rudder check again. Oh, I didn't even pick a spot. All right, let's see. F, uh... Let's go F66. All right, right there. Cool. Like, I knew where I was going, but shit, I didn't know exactly which spot. Alright, so since we picked F66, whoa, that's taking me to a spot. Maybe I should have turned there. <laughs> or we could, we could actually ride the blue line. That is legal. Alright, F66, and then no. We do not need to follow me. <laughs> what kind of drinks? Like straight up alcohol? Let me find out Reaper was drunk. That's a good plug. Lime just came online. Whiskey? Oh yeah, you was torn the fuck up. <laughs> I don't do the... Well, you know, I really don't do the darks, but... Wait a second. Wait a second. Am I in the right place? This doesn't look like the right place, y'all. Uh, this does not look like the right place. Hold on. 66 must be on the other side. What are the numbers here doing? 70. 
You know what? There's only one way to find out. Oh, I was in the right spot. Alright, let's just do a U turn. We need engine 2 to spool up. New Year, we definitely fucked your ass up on New Year's. <laughs> oh, he said I learned my lesson. I'm never doing that again. Alright, here's 66. Alright, let's slow it down a little bit. He said I'm never doing that again. Slow it down, slow it down. It's great that you're hiding behind a tug. Oh, now you're above it. Okay. Alright, we gotta center that a little bit and just let it roll. Yes, sir, you're at the end of that thing. No, I didn't mean to slow down some more. I just wanted to turn a little bit. Give me a little power. No, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Ah, uh, I guess that'll work. Uh, brake set. APU is on, right? Yep. Masters off. Beacon off. Seat boats off. Fuel pumps off. A whole lot of off. Hey, my man. Gangnam Style. Oh, 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 oh. Which I know about that. Alright, so we had a great parking job. Pretty sure the company would love that. Let me just clear out these annoying. Let's actually request a deboard. The boarding requested. How early did we get to the gate? One minute to spare. Perfect. Submit the pirate. Uh, EOC menu. Receive messages. Need two arrival messages. All right. Need me to open the AF cargo doors. It's crazy because that's not my job. I don't want to uh, hook up the um, jetway. Okay. Passengers, the boarding starting. So we're just not going to hook up the jet. Do you mean jetway not close enough? It's right there. Reasons why I hate GSX number one hundred and twenty-five. Hold on. That is wild talking about the gate's not close enough. It's literally right there. It's crazy how it works when um I tell the simulator itself to do it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this wonderful flight from Oslo to Paris. Um, man, what a stretch. We actually, how many different people did we talk to today? Oslo didn't have tower, but they had approach, so then we had also control, then we had Brussels. We talked to three different people today. So it wasn't a bad turnout as far as ATC. I would say, respectively, it might have been 50-50 on time on comms versus time off, time off comms. Um, today is Sunday, right? Yeah, today is Sunday. 
tomorrow I'm going to be on at my normal time. All right, Reaper. I'm going to be on um, my normal time, 6 p.m. Eastern. But then after tomorrow, my work schedule changes. So I think I'll probably be more inclined to do morning streams if I'm going to keep the same day schedule at least. So, if you can't catch me live, you could always catch me on YouTube. Since I send every stream over to YouTube as well as um, Twitch. But I think after 30 days, Twitch drops one. While they're all available on YouTube. So, um, yeah, so from here on out, I'll be... I don't know what time in the morning. That's a good question. GMT British summertime. So it's at like five hours ahead. I think the winter time is six hours, right? Or did I say that backwards? So right now it should be the two, two, three, three, four. Either four, I think it's four o'clock your time, right? PM. Yep, okay. So you're five hours ahead now, and in wintertime, you're six hours ahead. So for you, I got to figure out what time, but I don't know. When your schedule changes, it throws everything off. I haven't figured out a time yet, so I'm leaning more to like the 9, 10 o'clock hour Eastern time. And... He said, all good. Yeah, but I don't know. Do you play any other games? Do you want to deboard pro? Yes. I do. Who the boarding starting? Let me see. Since I've been on my, um... On my goal to get up to a hundred raids. Let's see, uh, who can I raid today? I think we said we're gonna do line, so I'll raid line. Hopefully, I spelled that correctly, but yeah. Everyone, thanks for the viewing. Um, Pilots to boarding starting. I will be on again several times today, so maybe two more times today. But I doubt I'll do flight sim. I'll probably do one Fortnite since the new season is out, and who knows what the third one will be. But I'm gonna try to get it in today. Um, tomorrow, 6 p.m. So, again, thanks for joining. Um, I feel like there's something I'm forgetting. But yeah, for now, uh, we're gonna go raid Lime. He's probably doing a flight to somewhere in the United States. He's got to play anything that takes interest? Okay, well, what's your top three? Top three games right now. See if we have any other intersecting interests. Red Dead, Flight Sim, Truck AT. I've been want. I know it's been like years since Red Dead came out. I've been wanting to play that, but... I don't know. I feel like it's going to fall off the same way GTA kind of fell off for me. I don't know. It's a chill game. Yeah, I've looked at a couple reviews for it, but you know, it's like, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared, because like, when I first bought GTA itself, um, I didn't even play it, I bought it and it sat for a while, then my friends got on, then I made some more friends on there, so it's cool, I was rocking with that, 
and then it just kind of fell off. Story is amazing. Uh, you looking forward to GTA 6? It's a little. Yeah, it's kind of. My PlayStation is still in the box. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. But, only time will tell. Alright, let's go raid uh, Lime and see where he's flying to today. Um, again, thank you guys, and I'll catch you on the next turn. Peace.